that's a hell of a lot better. Hey folks, welcome back to the big show. It's been a while since I put any video up on any sort of repair. I've been filling the holes in with those machining videos and like midweek machining and so forth as I um, was able to generate that kind of content. Really sorry about that. I know a lot of people don't really care for those too much based on the viewer views, that's for sure. So um, I want to uh, get back into putting the content up that you expect from this channel, which is what I'm going to be talking about here right now. This is a 73 Z1 900. So first year, uh, it's a build date, I believe, of 12 of 72. So as you can see in this particular <laughs> layout, it's how it exists right now is quite disassembled. I did shoot clips. I shot a lot of footage when came in and explained, you know, the walk around, all that's not kind of stuff. But when the COVID came, that's the real problem there. That's really through a monkey wrench and everything. When my wife and I got COVID, it totally screwed everything up in regards to scheduling. And I forgot where I was. And at that point, I really didn't care because I was so sick. And we still, she still, not me, but she still has some lingering symptoms. She's going on like six weeks now. This really took us out. I'm, ex I'm having some other medical issues as well, which I'll get into another time, which actually could be quite serious in the long run. I'm hoping not, but waiting on some tests coming up to, uh, determine the next course of action if there is any course of action. It's not cancer, nothing like that, but I will get into it in a, in a future video. So this is what we're gonna do in this video. Besides tap this little latch for the seat here. Does that bother you? What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just finish this quick intro and I'm gonna put some of the clips in an abbreviated format that I shot initially when this came in, because I want you to be able to see it in its all its splendor, if you will, with the tank and the plastics and stuff on. I, I'll tell you right up front, I ha I've been having some trouble getting this one running right. This came in as a non-runner. I didn't even film any attempt to start it. And uh, I wouldn't say I made some stupid mistakes, but I made some assumptions and learned a few things along the line. And so essentially we've corrected 98% of it. Um, I'll get into the rest of the time that we're going to need as far as correcting, you know, the final 2% here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and get on with that. And then after I do some abbreviated clips, we'll do some clips of me having some trouble getting it running. And then we're going to fast forward to right now and I'll explain how it runs now. I'll show you that. And we'll also go over, um, you know, what we did, of course, what I did and what the problems were and the solutions and where we're going next. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. The next project is a 1973 Z1, the first year of the 900. So this is not a KZ 900. I think got 38.5 on it. She's in pretty nice shape overall. And we're gonna do a quick walk around. I'm gonna tell you what the plans are, then we'll move on. So here's the rear, there's a little bit of body damage that relates to the planes that I'm gonna discuss here in a minute. A little scratch here, we'll have to replace this um, lens, it's kind of beat up. And the tank's got a couple of uh-ohs in it, uh, like uh, our paint's starting to blister. But overall, it's in pretty good shape. Side covers, a little your typical stress cracking there. And a little chip on the engine paint here. A little bit of surface rust, which will clean up with some steel wool and WD-40. The forks are leaking, um, especially the left one, so they need to be re rebuilt. So that's the, that's the right side. Um, the left side is equally about the same. You know, it's not terrible, and uh, we can certainly work with it. Uh, as far as the back end on the left side, it's a little better than the right side. The stickers are in immaculate condition. You can see that under the seat as well. They have either been replaced, or they're just original and just this thing's been stored very well. I took the air filter out to look at it, so that's just why that's open. And so yeah, not bad at all. The seat is in great condition. Looks like it's been probably replaced. It looks like the whole seat pan and everything has been replaced. See the new bolts there? So yeah, nice shape. Um, we're gonna take that off here soon and set it aside. It does not really run, so I'm not gonna run it for you. I mean, it'll pop and sputter, but it really, it's, it's not much to video. I mean, it just doesn't want to run right. And you can see right here, you got a bunch of crud seeping out from number one float bowl. It's varnishy. 
Um, I looked inside the tank. The tank is pristine. I mean, wicked pristine. You know what? I could probably show you that real quick if I can get this open. It doesn't require a key. Try that. I mean, look at that. That tank is like pristine in there. Usually I get a gas tank that I got to spend hours on soaking in evaporest two or three times. So that's really nice to not have to deal with that. The red goo of death is around the uh, generator cover. So somebody's been in here. So I need to test that. We're gonna replace that gasket. See why somebody's been in there. See if the stator's any good. Maybe we'll have to replace that too. I don't know. Fix that, clean all that up. The thing drags when, it, um, when you roll it. So it's a front caliper since it's got a drum in the back. She spins fine. So it's gotta be this guy up here. So we're gonna have to at least take it apart and clean it probably rebuild it. This is not going to be a restoration. Like the KZ900 was uh, the completion of a restoration started by somebody else. We're, we're just going to be refurbishing this. This is a refurbishment, I would call it. That, that's my definition of it. It's just going over it and getting it into serviceable condition. And what the customer is going to do is um, I'm going to drain the fuel and, and we're going to give them that going to give him the side covers and the rear cowling. He's going to take him to a paint guy. And he says he's got a paint guy that can do some magic touch-ups and then just clear coat them. So it just re-clears. So in other words, re retain some of the patina, which I think is an excellent idea to do. And while we're doing that, I'll be doing some other things, like he wants to replace these um, control, you know, the individual controls with new ones. You can buy these aftermarket, so it doesn't make any sense to try to refurbish them in-house, but we'll go through the master, repaint that. I've already ordered some paint. I've already uh, got new um, handles coming because this one's in pretty bad shape. And you can see this is why it's stuck, you see? When, when it doesn't recoil all the way like this, that, that master's are probably all stuck and so is the caliper. And so then we're gonna just kind of touch up things, paint some little parts, I use PJ1 for that stuff. I already ordered some. And like I said, we're just gonna make it a lot nicer than it is right now, but not replace a lot of stuff. I seriously doubt we're gonna go through and replace hardware because when we go down that rabbit hole, you gotta do, if you're gonna do one or two, you gotta do them all, otherwise they stand out. So that's what we're gonna do with that is probably just leave those. And if there's something really crusty, we'll go ahead and replace it. But other than that, um, this is a refurbishment, like I said. I got her covered up because we got the head cover, not the head, the head cover off. And the reason why I did that was I just like taking them off. It just excites me. So in, in actuality though, the reason why is because um, although we do have a bad spark plug hole in this, I did manage to do a um, compression test. And here are the numbers. And they weren't good. Cylinder one was good at 130, or basically good, basically. Cylinder 2 was at 83 at 85, and Cylinder 4 was at 110. Now, Cylinder 2 has got a problematic uh, spark plug hole, which I've already put the plug back in because I can't mess with it. So I was having a hard time to get my, um, uh, my tester to seat properly in there, but I did manage to get it better. But here is the problem, the reason why compression is so bad. And that is valve clearances. So anyway, here's what we got. If you look at number one, intake and exhaust, um, intake is pretty far out at uh, six thou because it's two to four thou. And then the exhaust is okay at two and a half, but it's on the borderline side. And remember, not, number one was the one we had a decent number on. Number two, the uh, intake side was less than one and a half thou. In other words, I can't get a one and a half thou feeler in there. So essentially the clearance is zero maybe even less than zero. And then the uh, exhaust side was tight at two and a half thou. Number three was the same way on the intake side at less than uh, uh, one and a half thou, therefore zero. And it was a three thousandths on the exhaust, which is okay. And then on number four, the exhaust was the one that was less than uh, one and a half thou and then the number four intake was barely okay at two and a half thou. So as a test, what I ended up doing was I took um, number two here on the intake. Remember number two intake uh, was the one that was less than uh, one and a half thou as well. I changed it to, uh, from a 2.70 to a 2.55 because I don't have a 2.60 shim. And it's about a six thou clearance, so that's out. I'm not gonna leave it that way. I've ordered some shims. 
but the compression jumped up to 120 PSI on that cylinder just doing that. I talked to the customer, he doesn't want me messing with the hole to try to fix it, so it is what it is, but we're able to get the compression back up to essentially the same as number one, let's just say, certainly within 10%. So what we're gonna end up doing is doing the same operations on number three and number four. I can test them, and then we'll see what the uh, compression is for that. And if we can get all the compression back up to you know pretty much close across the board, and uh, you know 120, 130 or so, which I wish it was higher, but it's probably not gonna be, um, then this thing should run pretty good. So that's probably why the thing wasn't running for ship before, was not just carburetor, because these carburetors over there, I mean, there's really no smoke and gun as far as any gunk or anything in there. I, like I said, I've cleaned the internals out. I gotta do some light clean on the outside. And all the circuits are verified as to flow. So um, I don't think it was them exclusively. Certainly some bad gas in them and some water in the gas when I drained them. But um, I think it was uh, mainly the compression issue that was, that was uh, giving us a problem. I'll report back at a later time what our compressions uh, on all four, our compressions, our compression uh, numbers are on each of the four. I just don't have all the shims I need, but um, I just ordered them individually and ordered some extras. They might even be here today, but I'm probably not going to feel well enough to deal with that later. So that's where we're at on this. And we'll put it all back together because this is not going to be anywhere near the extent of work like on the KZ900 or the Z1R. We're just going to get this running okay, you know, decently, best we can in its, in its present situation. And then this is going to get shoved to the side. Okay, so that brings you up to date this point. Any more clips will be further information as we move down the line in this project. All right, so where we're at right now is got the uh, valve clearance adjustments done and retested the compression. Um, the initial compression on number one was um, 130 PSI. It's 118 now, number two is 118, number three is the same, number four is 120. Now I think this 130 was an anomaly because what we had was a cylinder number one had a six thou uh, clearance um, on the intake, which um, is not good because that's too big. It's two to four thou. And uh, the initial clearance on the exhaust was two and a half thou. Again, I'm not really too sure about this 130 on number one, um, just because that was a bigger clearance. I don't think that was doing it. It must have been an anomaly. I don't know, but um, this is no good here, okay? This is no good because we're way, way all over the board here. Even if this is 120, 80 to 120, uh, 120 would be, 10% of 120 would be 12. Okay, so 80 to 100 is 20 right there. We're outside of the percentage range for having these things balanced, okay? But right now we're within two PSI, so we're good. Uh, you can see on top of the piston through the hole, there's a 0 .50 oversize, so it's um, half a mil over. So somebody's done that part of the top end at least. So uh, you never know. I don't know how long this thing's been sitting. Off camera, I'm gonna get the, uh, all this crap scraped off. I hate this when people do this crap and put Goo, you're not supposed to put goo on all this thing. The only place goo goes is these on the caps. And you overhang it a little bit on each side underneath the gasket. So I, don't, I hate it when people do this. So now it's gonna take me quite a bit of time to get this all off. I have a new head cover gasket for it. Get the head cover back installed. Slam the carbs in, which are done. The carbs are totally done. And, uh, and then we'll see how it runs. Now I did check the cam timing after, you know, what happened on the, KZ900 and the cam timing is spot on on this. So that's where we're at and uh, we'll take it up when we get to that point. Everything's put back together as you can see. Got a brand new air filter in and we're hooked up to fuel. The carbs are completely done as I mentioned before. So let's throw some fuel to her. Well, my luck, it'll probably spit fuel everywhere because I missed something. <laughs> oh, we got an overflow. What in the hell? See, that's what I was worried about, and I don't know why. Ford did this to me before. I don't know why it's overflowing. God dang it. Being it's an end carb, I can take the float bowl off and sit you, and this is the float valve out of it. And on closer examination, let's see if I can zoom up on it a little bit. I don't know if this will pick it up, but looks like there is a little ridge or something on this when you see it. I didn't notice that before. 
Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. So that would make sense because if it's moving around in there, it might seat one moment and then not seat another. So I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a replacement one that's exact same length in there. These are 18 dash, let's see now, 8956s that these would be uh, for that exact same length. Uh, I did try it while the float bowl was off and just held the float up there. It was not sealing 100% with the other one, the other needle, but with this one that I just put in, it was. She does not want to run for shit and just the points are sparking like you wouldn't believe and the capacitors are hooked up properly it looks like maybe they're bad this could very well be ignition because them them points are really sparking i don't know why they're sparking but Yeah, she did not want to run. Okay, I'm gonna have to look into this a little bit more. All right, folks, here's where we're at. Uh, we've decided to trade this for an e-bike. Okay, just kidding. So here we go. I believe we have an electrical issue going on as far as uh, amperage and current loss, as far as voltage drop goes, and thus current drop as well. There's a couple of reasons for this. And I, I think these several things that I'm about to tell you are participatory in what our problems are with, with uh, it running, especially at lower RPM. Kind of gives you a hint. First thing is, on the ignition side, um, I, I have triple checked the points and they look good, and I did meter up the caps, but I'm getting unreliable measurements, and the book really doesn't help you too much because they want you to use a, uh, a Kawasaki testing tool of the period, and I don't have one. Timing is exactly right. What I did find was, and we'll get more to the coils here in a second, two of the caps on the spark plugs, which are five kilo ohm resistor caps, were bad uh, for number two and three, in fact. So on one coil, the two um, caps were bad. I, I metered, I took the caps off and metered them individually. One was completely open. I don't remember if it was two or three. The other one, the resistance was going all over the place. One and four caps were good. I got rid of them all and put non-resistor caps on because you don't need them anyway, you got resistor plugs, all right? So we solved that problem. As far as the coils go, the coils look newer than OEM. They, I think these are non-OEM coil. I think, the, I think these have been replaced at some time. So what we had a problem with was, had a huge voltage drop at the coils on this um, yellow with a red. That's your main feed, it comes down through the, ultimately, through the uh, kill switch, okay? Ignition, kill switch, goes around, comes up to the coils. So I figured that out by taking, uh, doing it two ways. Number one, metering the voltage at this wire itself with the ignition on, it was like 9.2 volts, it was very, very low. The battery was only like at 11.8 at that point, but that's still a pretty significant drop. Number two, I put a positive lead of the, of the meter here and a negative lead on the positive of the battery and I get like a 2.6 or something like that volt, voltage drop. So confirm that both ways. And that's because of bad connections in this, in this harness. Probably bad connections behind here, most definitely bad connections up there in the kill switch. And you can still see on this wiring harness coming off the right uh, side switches, there's a bunch of corrosion in there. And other har there's a couple other plugs the same way. Some of the plugs were fine, but a couple of them no, no bueno, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm change, I changed the whole harness out because I have one in stock anyway because I ordered a 73 harness in error when I had the 76 in here. Change the harness out behind the main junction box, that small harness that comes with it. This is the main harness coming off. And yes, it's supposed to have a white plug for this one. I don't know why. Uh, the 76 had the brown plug, but this guy says right in the literature from uh, Z1 Parts 
that this plug is, is white, so plug it to the brown one. So these are all hooked up correctly. I put a new main battery line in, and I put a new ground main ground in as well. Uh, along with this main battery line comes the white wire that comes off of here, which is your main power for the bike um, to power everything up. That's this white wire that comes around to the back side of here. If you look at the video in the 76, I really explain this by showing you both sides of it, okay? But so this, this is all good. The connections are all good here. This is good. Because when you ran this thing, these would, this would all get hot. This would get hot. This would get hot. And of course, the wire that was on the red one was terrible. It was all frayed and stuff. It's in really bad shape. So we got rid of that and we're almost ready to try this. I've got this thing jetted out right now at one third, uh, I'm sorry, 125 in the mains and 25 in the slows. That's different from the jetting I talked about in the previous clips. I have not filmed for you guys running of that with the old wiring in here because it still ran like shit with that bigger jetting. I'm going to film as soon as I get all the stuff in those, that new control and get everything hooked up and verify no voltage drops. I mean, there's always a little bit along, you know, a length of a wire. Um, then, then I'll turn the camera back on and we'll try it with the electrical system corrected, the problems in the electrical system corrected, because there's definitely problems. We're going to try it at that point. And again, it'll be seconds for you, but it's going to be a while for me. So I'll see you back then. Okay, and like that, a few seconds go by and we're at that point. So I've got the new control in here, actually both of them, with the uh, fresh kill switch, and I've got a new ignition switch, brand new. There's a couple reasons why I did this. Number one was I wanted a new key, Kawasaki key, and also the, this key doesn't fit the steering lock nor the seat lock, so this kit comes with both of them, all three of them rather. So I'm gonna eventually replace that one and that one. That way he's got a key that controls everything. But the main objective was to clear up any potential voltage drop or current drop loss uh, through this harness from the ignition switch, because of course that powers everything. And then, as I said before, this kill switch goes directly down to the coils. So this was mainly causing the problems with the voltage drop. Now, I know that because off camera yesterday, I experimented a little bit and I did some jumpers I put, some, I, I put the old ignition switch back in after I cleaned up the connector and actually took the switch apart, which isn't the easiest thing to do, and cleaned the contacts, which are really bad. And I got that to have no voltage drop through this length at least, and the connection was good. But I also jumpered some other wires, uh, namely the starter wire here off of this plug here, so I could actually use the old um, uh, control that was up here, but just for the push button start did not go through the kill switch for the um, uh, for the coils. I jumpered that wire as well. So when I did that and I checked the voltage drop at the coils with the new harness in place, I was down to 300 millivolts, which is a hell of a lot better than like 2.6 or 2.7 volts, whatever it was when I tested it initially. I, I really wish I had filmed that, but I didn't. So anyway, now that I have it set up the way it's ultimately gonna be with the controls and the ignition switch. I'm gonna set you in the stand. We're gonna recheck for any voltage drop to make sure we have solved that. Then I'm just gonna run it for you briefly um, and show you, I got it running a little bit better. And uh, I'll show you that and we'll go over reasons why and what the next steps are gonna be to bring this um, to home plate. 12.44, yeah, she's pretty good. So we'll start with that. Yesterday I had to hook it up to the charger to get it to even crank, and I don't know if I'll need to do that. This battery isn't the greatest, I don't think. But. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the voltage at that uh, location where the coil wires are plugged in. That would be the yellow wire with a red stripe, which is right up here. We got 11.53 volts. That's pretty darn good. So now what we're going to do is we are going to check the voltage drop on this circuit by just going with, we leave this where it's at with the positive on this hot lead and we're going to put the negative over on the positive side of the battery. But once we start flowing voltage, we'll have a voltage drop reading, which is 0.7 volts. It's a little higher than I had yesterday when I ran my jumpers, but it's still very acceptable. It's under one, one um, volt, well under. And uh, that's about what you're gonna get with all these different connectors in here anyway. 
So we know we got good voltage to the coils. We know we don't have a significant voltage drop. It's pretty much normal. So with that, uh, we, could, we verified that that's all good, all right? And remember, I had like a 2.6 or 2.7 voltage drop. What I did up here was I took the old harness that goes to the gauges, because I have a new harness in the gauges, but the gauges have to get sent out. And I have the neutral light and the oil pressure light working. So I want to see the oil pressure light go out. We're going to do first is unhook the coils, crank it over for a bit, and make sure the oil pressure light goes out. Then we'll rehook them up. I'll throw it on some fuel, and then I'll show you how how it's running right now and what we're going to do next. Okay, coils are disconnected. I did crank it over yesterday for a while without any power going to the um, bike at all. I just I just jumpered the uh, solenoid over here, so it should come off pretty good. So let's make sure that that's the case. There it goes. I just want to make sure we got good oil pressure before we crank it over. Because like I said, I changed oil and filter yesterday. All right, so let me hook her up to some fuel. All right, fuel's on. Give her a little enricher. Fire her up here. Let's go ahead and turn the ignition on. Make sure the oil light does go out when it runs as well. I don't see why it wouldn't. Yep. I do want to recheck the oil level though before I run it anymore, so hang on. Now it's not running as good as it did yesterday. It just doesn't want to run. bit better. All right. This is what I've come up with. Because I've changed all of the uh, spark plug caps over from resistor to non-resistor, because I think I mentioned earlier that there was two that resistor caps that were bad. And I changed one spark plug on number one because it wasn't sparking very well, but even that change, it wasn't sparking very well. And, and because of the way the points look, the way they're sparking, I changed the um, I changed the condenser pack over to the old one that was in the box, the original one. And on the two and three cylinder point, which is over on the right side, the sparking went down, but the one and four didn't. Remember, one is giving us a weak spark, even with a replacement plug. And remember the coils, I told you before, when I metered them up, I don't know, a week or so ago, they're not exactly good as far as the numbers go. Now, I talked to the previous owner on the phone yesterday because my customer gave me his number. Super nice guy. He's up in Oklahoma. And I asked him about what he had done this bike. He said like 20-something years ago he had these coils replaced because he was on the road. He's actually up in the Smoky Mountains on this bike. Like 20, he said it may have been even longer. It may have been 30. 
and he um, he had a, the bike started running poorly, brought it to a shop and they diagnosed the coils and they replaced them with these coils. These are the coils that he had replaced on the road. So that leads me to believe that the coils, at least one of them is going bad, okay? Especially with the numbers the way they are. So the other thing is, of course, with the point sparking, the condenser may be bad. At least half of it, one of them is, okay? And so I'm looking around seeing if we could find some points and condenser for it. I really wanted to put OEM in. I can get OEM points, but they're very expensive. It'd be about 120 bucks for two sets of points. And the, the OEM condensers are no longer available. Might be able to get them new old stock, but what am I getting if I do that? And I don't want to put no Chinese parts in here. So I talked to a customer, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna go ahead and change it over to a Dynatech system. We're gonna order, I'm gonna order up new coils, new spark plug wire, I'm gonna reuse these caps because I like these non-resistor caps. I don't like the straight wires that come off uh, with the little nipples you have to screw on uh, the spark plugs that uh, Dynatech has. They look stupid and I'm just gonna cut the Dynatech wire at both ends. So when you get Dynatech wire, you get one big long piece that's got the caps on each end. We'll just cut those off and use the individual pieces, screw them into here. I wanna get copper core. This is why I emailed them and I tried to call them yesterday. Couldn't get through to them. Uh, I want to get copper core wires, not silicone wires, because I want to reuse these, okay? And then we're going to put the, like I said, Dynatech coils in. We're going to put the Dynatech pickup and assembly in. We're going to shotgun and get rid of all that crap. That gets rid of all the wires up here as well. The old wires that are coming up from the points. Gets rid of all that, and it eliminates that problem. Because the way this thing's running right now, it's dropping a couple of cylinders like that, okay? It's dropping them and then it's coming back in. That is not a fuel issue. That's an ignition issue or electrical issue. So I think if we solve that, this is gonna run pretty good. And then, and only then, if we need some jetting, I'll do the rejetting at that point. I don't believe it's gonna need it at this point, the way it's running. I don't believe it's gonna need any further jetting with the numbers I got in. Remember, I got 125s and 25s. The stock is 112 to 115 for the mains, depending on which ones you put in, and 20s for the slows. So it's jetted up way more than what you normally see, all right? So I don't believe it's that at all. I don't think it's fuel. And the fuel levels in the carbs, I have rechecked and rechecked everything else regarding fuel. I know it's getting fuel. And I know all this electrical is good, and I know we got good battery voltage, and as you saw, we don't have any significant voltage drop at the coils. So all the wiring's new, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and just shotgun all this crap, get it out of here, and um, so that's, that's the plan. Hey folks, found a local fan of my YouTube channel down here at a restaurant, and asked him what he thought of the channel and the content. Let me show you his response. Yeah, he thinks that's pretty cool shit. So let's see what this other fellow that I just bumped into thinks of my YouTube channel. Well, that wasn't very nice, now was it? All right, a uh, couple things from the clips that you're gonna notice jumps right out at you. I was a real dummy when I put these new carb holders on and I put the carb holders with the nipple sticking up now they do fit that way, but these two would be over there on one and two, and the ones from one and two would be over here on three and four. So the carbs fit and there was no leaks or anything, but that was stupid. So I corrected that obviously, because they're supposed to face down. The other thing you'll notice is we've got some green coils on there where the ones on there before were not. I put a Dynatech system in it that includes the electronic pickup down here and all new wiring, of course, that comes with this because it's pre-attached all the way up to here. And then I'll summarize the rest of this thing here in a moment as well. But this thing definitely runs about 98% right now. It needs another 2% of tuning, which we can't exactly do right now, which I'll tell you why. The main problem I had with this running was diagnosed after some rejetting of the carbs to ignition. So here's the point backing plate and the points that were in there. Now these points, are OEM, the TEKs or TECs, TECs rather. These are OEM points and I looked that up online and Parzilla, you can still get these. These are the original capacitors because they have the black and the green wire. The ones that were in here were aftermarket because they both had black wires. So those apparently were bad and one of these is bad. 
The one for one and four, which are to the left here, this is always to the left is one and four, to the right is two and three. This, this one was most likely bad because I got some really sparky points, especially on one and four. I had it on both of them. When I changed these capacitors, the uh, points on the two and three cylinders on the right, they didn't spark as much and it ran a little bit better, maybe 20%, 30% better. So I figured we had an ignition problem, but I started my diagnostics by verifying that I had spark. I had spark in all four cylinders, so I wasn't too concerned and I tested the coils. The coils that were in here tested okay, but they were slightly out of the norm for both, as far as the service manual norm, both the primary and secondary coils, you know, secondary windings rather in the coils. So what I ended up doing was I took the stock jetting that was in here. The stock jetting is 112 and a half for mains and 20s for the slows, pretty, sl pretty small mains. He had 113 mains, that's the previous owner, he, and 20s in the slows. So those are, it's pretty much correct. And I ended up putting in 17 and a halfs in the mains. No, I'm sorry, I changed the 22 and a halfs. I went 17 and a half and 22 and a half. It ran a little bit better. But I could tell it was struggling on the lean side. And you would think that if the ignition is, is being naughty and not playing nice, it would actually smell and run a little richer, and it wasn't. So I still think or thought that we had some lean going on. For whatever reason, I don't know. And then I ended up bumping it all the way up to 125s in the mains and 25s in the slows. And we'll get back to this here in a second. So also threw the synchronizer on it. And it was idling so bad I could barely get it synchronized, but I did get a rough synchronization. Now, off camera, about 20 minutes ago, I finally finished the synchronization. These carbs are a mother to sync. They have this really unusual setup. You can see how the action of the trunnion, if you will, where that connects to the linkage inside under the covers there that goes to the slides is kind of indirect as opposed to on newer VMs where it's, it essentially is a one rod that goes through right here on the main pivot and that activates everything. These are the synchronizers. This cap is supposed to be there. It's like base carb type thing. They don't want you to mess with this, but I, I did all four of them. And I got it pretty close, but every time I snapped the throttle, it would change. I had to do it three or four times. I had two fans sitting up here because I didn't want to overheat the thing. So I got that pretty much almost dead nuts. It's, it's close enough, it's close I can get. Yeah, so you'll see in a moment here how she runs. Runs pretty good right now, but it needs a little bit more. Can't do it yet because in this big box, there's another four into four. And so that has to be put on first before I tinker with the carbs at all. When I throw these on, it actually may turn out to be too rich of a, of a setup. And I'll pull the carbs at that point and make appropriate adjustments. I don't believe it's going to be because in Z1's literature for these aftermarket uh, systems, they're made in Japan, but they're aftermarket nonetheless, the reproductions, says they want to, you want to run these things a little on the rich side so they don't blue. So it may be good jetting for it, I don't know. So I get up to operating temperature and I whack it a few times. And if I get just a teeny, like with an exhaust like this that is, if I get a teeny bit of, of uh, vapor coming out of this thing from being a little bit rich, I, I leave it there for now because again, we're putting those four and fours on, we can always tailor it later on. I want to err on the rich side. I also can pull the plugs, but that um, information is pretty useless unless the thing's been ridden for a while. Once you ride it and get it in and out of a heat cycle a few times and get the throttle up, get it up to speed and holding higher speeds and stuff at higher RPMs, then the plug reading is more accurate. Uh, if I pulled these out right now, they'd be dark. But if we took this thing for a ride and he brought you know, somebody brought it back two or three hours later, they'd be a completely different color. Let's go ahead and turn the fuel on and get her fired up for your and you can see what I mean, how it runs. So the fuel is on. Let's go ahead and whack her and see what happens.
that's another thing that I'm concerned about is when it gets really hot, you got to back this idle off. That's another indication that it might be running lean. I have the air screws set at about one and five eighths. One and a half is standard. See? It's hanging a little bit. But when you gas it, you can get a little bit out of there. Doesn't smell all that gassy, but a little bit. Got a little bit of that sewing machine sound going on now, which is nice. So as you, if you compare that and see, I'll, I'll put a clip in here of this thing running right now. Back when um, it wasn't running worth a damn side by side here, if I can manage to do that. And you see that this thing is about 98% there. Now the last 2% is gonna come from there. I'm not gonna do any screwing around with tuning until we put the four and the four on. So she's a lot, I mean, I mean a lot better. And so, oh my God, I'm out of oil. Never mind, that's for the chain. So, <laughs> got you there, didn't I? So, yeah, um, I really like the way the coils came out, the wiring and so forth. I really enjoy doing these uh, ignition upgrades because I know the Dynatech is just great stuff, good customer service. But let me show you the problems with doing these things are they don't give you everything. Like for example, I had to make these um, standoff, these spacers, so I could get these coils mounted. I don't really like them jammed in like this, but it, yeah, there's no other way to do this. I'd have to make a bracket to get this thing to fit cockeyed or something, and I'm not doing that, it's just not practical. And putting them underneath here is absolutely a no joy because we, you wouldn't be able to get the head cover off ever without taking the coils off. So we gotta be able to do that in the future for whomever needs to do that. But you notice I cut some relief on this one, and that's to keep that as far away from that screw, which in this, in this case is the signal screw that comes up from the uh, pickup down below here. And I didn't put the power to it, the power's up here. And I cut this bolt down, I got these bolts at hardware, put them in this way so we don't have any of that thread penetrating down below for the same reason, the head cover. And got them all tightened up and everything's good. So I really enjoy doing these and uh, that is stainless because they didn't have any aluminum. This is a 7 16 stainless rod it wasn't terribly expensive, but you know, I just turned a relief in it and just made the other one straight and did both sides that way. Well, folks, we're gonna have to end the video here. My intentions were to get that new exhaust put on off camera. I, I am gonna film it and we'll probably put that up as a standalone video at a later time because it's kind of interesting to put these on. But as you know, the saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So we, we couldn't do it because the guy in the parts department, that'd be me, Forgot to order a couple things for the exhaust, namely the exhaust donuts, you know, the gaskets that go in there between the header and the head, and also the proper hardware, the nuts and the lock washers uh, for it. I assume they were M8, and that's what I picked up a few days ago at the, at the hardware store, because the KZ900, KZ1000, those are M8 studs. Well, guess what? These are M6 studs, didn't realize that. So I went back to the hardware store, which happens to be right next to the grocery store where I go, Pick those up today, but I don't have the exhaust gasket. So there you go. I don't know how I missed that. I really, I have everything else. I've got the installation kit 
so where it bolts up to the factory locations and the grommets and the bolt and the whole bit. And I have the exhaust flanges that go at the header side because none of that comes with the exhaust. And I just, it just flipped my mind. I, I don't know what happened. So, so I have to get something up on the channel here. That's why this is going up now because with all this delay from all the COVID and all this other crap, my analytics are basically in the tank. I've got to get something up to help with that and hopefully get something out of it nonetheless. Um, I did my best to try to re-edit all this, and I'm really sorry it was kind of crappy as far as I scattered around a little bit, but it was the best I could do with what, what happened to us with the COVID and everything else that's going on medically. So we'll get into all that stuff at a later time. So I hope you got something out of the video nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, subscribe, ring the bell, do all whatever the check boxes are that you get notified when I put uh, new videos up. And you get notified when I put more crap like this up. So until that time, always remember, don't just repair, restore. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.